I arrived in Romania exactly one week before Ashley, Emily, and my dad got there. I flew there and stayed with Stephanie Dobrovet and her parents in an apartment in Baku. Staying with Stephanie was a totally different experience for me from my first trip to Romania last summer and even from the rest of the trip this year after she had left. It was different because the first time I was with a group of Americans and always having a translator with us, but this time I was just with Romanians and I felt more as though I kind of lived like I was a Romanian. I don't know, it was a really cool experience for me. And I was able to pick up a little bit more <laughs> Romanian that way. And Stephanie and I became even better and closer friends over this trip, which was really great. That week, we spent a lot of time with the youth in Baku. And we also made a few visits to the, an orphanage that was nearby. Almost, almost every day, we would have Bible studies at the apartment with the youth group. And we'd go to the park and have fellowship together and sing. And we would also spend time just getting to know each other. I became such good friends with so many of these people. It was really great. Every morning at 6 a.m., the youth gathered together for a time of daily Bible reading, prayer, and fellowship. I was only able to attend this Bible study once since I didn't understand what they were saying most of the time. And it was hard for Stephanie to be involved with it and have to translate for me. I was amazed at how dedicated the youth are. They gather every morning and read a few chapters from the Bible together and then split into groups and pray for each other. They have been doing this for months now. It all started when Gabi presented the idea to the youth group that they could meet every morning at 6 a.m. to read the Bible, pray, and have fellowship. He gave them some time to think and pray about it. He gave them the option so that no one was obligated to do it. It was their own choice. After some time, He said that he'd be at the church at 6 a.m., and whoever wanted to come could join him. There were way more youth that showed up at the church that morning than he had expected. The youth there are a great example of how dedicated they are and how close they are to God. Stephanie doesn't have a youth group in Colorado, and so we decided that once we got our schedules for school, we would call each other every morning before we both get a class. We're planning on reading several chapters from the Bible together and praying together. Our first day of this is actually tomorrow. (laughs) One visit that really struck me was one that we went on in a gypsy village in Suchada. There was a young widow, and she had three daughters there. I think they were 11, 13, and 15 years old. Her husband had died 11 years ago, and she was a street sweeper for a living, and the rest of the time she'd go out in the fields and pick mushrooms to provide for her family. This woman was such an amazing example to me. She's so strong and mature in the Lord. She's always praising God, reading the Bible, and singing in the midst of all of her tribals. She was so thankful for the so little that she had. I remember her telling us that God was so good to her, and God wouldn't give us more than we can bear. This reminded me of 1 Corinthians 10.13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. This then became my favorite verse in the Bible. This is when I understood what great meaning it really has. When we arrived at her home, she told us that she had just recently had a dream. And in her dream, a man came to her home and opened up the scriptures. That day that we went to visit her, she was supposed to be out in the fields picking mushrooms. But the night before, her daughter had gotten sick, and she decided that the next day she'd stay home to take care of her. When we came, she thought of it as her dream being fulfilled, which was kind of neat. It's amazing how we usually go on visits hoping to encourage the people we visit with, but end up being the ones that leave encouraged. (laughs) Her daughters were so sweet and so excited to see us. She also had a niece who's only four years old, and they wouldn't stop hugging us and holding our hands. They also wouldn't stop smelling our hair. I guess it smelled good to them. So every few seconds, they'd lean in and take turns smelling our hair. It was... (laughs) Yeah. It was really sad to have to leave them. They did not want to let go of us. <laughs> We'd try to get in the car, and they'd hold on to us. <laughs> it was cute. Another visit that really stood out to me was when we went to visit Cesar's grandma in Suchala also. This is a lady that Emily was talking about that led Cesar to the Lord. She was truly an amazing example. She was so sweet and also very wise. She had also some shocking and rather frightening but awakening advice from the Lord. 
She told me that I need to watch and pray and to not postpone. She also said that where there's prayer, don't neglect. Matthew 25, 13 says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. This made me so much more aware of how I need to be ready in everything that I do. The whole rest of the trip, I couldn't stop thinking about this woman and what she had said to me. The first time that I met with the youth while I was with Stephanie in Romania, they asked me why I wanted to come back to Romania. At the moment, I honestly didn't know how to answer. I don't know why, but this was such a hard question for me. (laughs) And I couldn't find the right words to tell them. But now I know why I love going to Romania so much and why God me had go back this summer, had me go back this summer. read the Bible on my own. On one of the first few days that I was in Romania, Stephanie talked to me about this. She's the first person that was honest with me and straight up told me that I wasn't living right and that I really needed to change. I couldn't really be a Christian if I were living like this. That's when I realized for the first time that everything she said to me was completely true. I still didn't know what I should do about it. I didn't know what to change or really how. But on this one night in Vaslui, God spoke to me, and I said a prayer. I decided that I wanted to live my entire life for him, and that I needed to repent for a lot of things. After that, I had a new joy and a real new peace. This was my second trip to Romania, and it really had a lifetime effect on me. Last summer, my eyes were open to a lot of new things, but I still didn't think that how I was living wasn't right. When I got home last summer... I was maybe just more thankful for some things for about a week, but then it faded and everything just went back to normal. For some reason, I still really wanted to go back to Romania, though. Now I am so thankful that Stephanie invited me to stay with her and her family in Romania and that God let me go back. While I was there, I really learned that I need to walk by faith and not by sight, which is found in 2 Corinthians 5-7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. I learned that God is in control and that there's nothing to be concerned about when I'm doing God's will. I'd seriously love to go back to Romania again and actually live there. (laughs) I love how I don't worry about the same things when I'm there, and I'm always around people that truly love the Lord and enjoy having fellowship with one another. It's so different there, and I love every single person that I met. I can't wait to go back to Romania, hopefully this summer.